Hello, everybody. My name is Mason, and this is Mason Zero ASMR. Uh, today, I'm going to be going through my Commander 2016 deck that I just bought. I've already sleeved it up on everything, but I've kept the cards in the same order that they came in. So, um, I'm just going to go through them in order of how they came. I'm going to read through each card. Uh, I got the Invent Superiority deck, and it is white, blue, black, and red, and it's all about artifacts. So the special four-color commander for it is right here. This is the jumbo-sized one, and it is foil, which is cool. And this is Brea Ethereum Shaper, which costs one of each of the four colors of this deck for a 4-4 four, four legendary artifact creature human when Brea Ethereum Shaper enters the battlefield create two 1-1 one, one blue Thopter artifact creature tokens with flying you can pay two and sacrifice two artifacts and choose one of the following Brea deals three damage to target player or target creature gets minus four minus four until end of turn or you gain five life so pretty cool commander. I bought this one because I want to get into artifact stuff a little bit more. Um, I ha don't have too much experience with the artifact aspect of magic, and I know that it can be pretty powerful. So I figured this would be something a little bit new for me rather than something more that I'm more used to, like the plus one, plus one counters deck, although that deck seemed awesome. Uh, but that's something that I am used to more. So I figured I'd out of my comfort zone a little bit. So first we have the normal sized version of Brea, um, which is still cool, and of course still foil. A very cool looking card in foil. And then we have all the tokens that came with it. So we have some thopters, some birds, more thopters, more birds. And then the back side, there's mirrors, Doretti emblem, germ tokens, goat tokens, and more mirrors, and a horror artifact creature. So, so some, some tokens in this deck. So each of these decks comes with three partner commanders, meaning that they can be sort of a dual commander. You can have two commanders if both of them have the partner keyword. So each deck comes with three of them, and they're all in foil, which is awesome. So the first one is Akiri Line Slinger. It's one red and one white for a legendary creature, Core, core Soldier Ally. It is a 0-3 with first strike and vigilance, but it gets plus one, plus O oh for each artifact you control. And of course it has partner. And it is foil. Then we have Bruce Tarl, Boorish Herder, Legendary Creature, Human Ally, two and a red and a white for a 3-3. Three, three. When he enters the battlefield or attacks, target creature you control gains double strike and lifelink until end of turn. <clears throat> so those are, so that one's definitely more of an aggressive one. Uh, and then of course the one that fits into the deck a little bit more is... Uh, Silas Wren, Seeker Adept. Uh, one thing I was noticing is that Silas is mythic, and oddly enough, Bruce Tarl is mythic. I mean, I don't know. That ability seems okay. I don't know if it's worth mythic status. But then uh, Akiri is rare. Not that that means anything for, for rarity, but it denotes the power level, supposedly. Mythics are generally more complicated. Um, so, anyways, Silas Wren, Seeker Adept, is one, a blue, and a black for a 2-2 legendary artifact creature, human, with death touch. Whenever Silas Wren, Seeker Adept, deals combat damage to a player, choose target artifact card in your graveyard. You may cast that card this turn. So, pretty cool. Seems to be a artifact sacrifice theme in this deck bit, so there's some artifact recursion as well. So we'll get into the regular cards. 
Mirror Retriever is too generic for a 1-1 artifact creature, Mirror. When it dies, return another target artifact card from your graveyard to your hand. Vidalcan Engineer. One in the blue for a 1-1 creature, Vidalcan Artificer. Tap it and add two mana of any one color to your mana pool. Spend this mana only to cast artifact spells or activate abilities of artifacts. Ethereum Sculptor. One in a blue for a 1-2 artifact creature, Vidalcan Artificer. Artifact spells you, co you cast cost one less to cast. Baleful Strix. <clears throat> Baleful Strix is a blue and a black for a 1-1 one, one artifact creature, Bird, with flying and death touch. When it enters the battlefield, draw a card. Banned in modern, I believe. <laughs> Uh, Trinket Mage, two and a blue for a 2-2 creature, Human Wizard. When it enters the battlefield, you may search your library for an artifact card with converted mana cost one or less. Reveal that card and put it into your hand. If you do, shuffle your library. Etched Oracle is four generic for a 0-0 artifact creature, Wizard. With Sunburst, enters the battlefield with a plus one plus one counter on it for each color of mana spent to cast it. You can pay one and remove four counters from it, and target player draws three cards. So, presumably, it'll come in with four. Sanctum Gargoyle is three and a white for a two-three artifact creature gargoyle with flying. When it enters the battlefield, you may return target artifact card from your graveyard to your hand. Everflowing Chalice is a zero mana artifact with multi-kicker for two, generic. It enters the battlefield for with a charge counter on it for each time it was kicked. And you can add a colorless to your mana pool for each charge counter on it by tapping it. Skull Clamp is one mana for an artifact equipment. Equipped creature gets plus one, minus one. Whenever equipped creature dies, draw two cards and equip for one. Soul Ring, uh, one generic mana for an artifact that taps for two colorless mana. Dispeller's Capsule is one white for an artifact. Pay two and a white and tap it and sacrifice it. Destroy target artifact or enchantment. And then Executioner's Capsule is a one black for an artifact. Pay one in a black and tap it to sacrifice and sacrifice it to destroy target non-black creature. Cranial plating is uh, two mana for an artifact equipment. Equipped creature gets plus one plus zero oh for each artifact you control. You can pay two black and attach it to target creature you control or equip for one. Which of course the two black version is good because you can do it at instant speed, which is pretty cool. Felwar, Felwar Stone, uh, it's too generic for an artifact. Tap it to add to your mana pool one mana of any color that a land in a, an opponent controls can produce. Which works nicely in these four color decks going against each other. Icker Wellspring is two mana for an artifact. When it enters the battlefield or is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, draw a card. Mycosynth Wellspring. Two mana for an artifact. When it enters the battlefield or is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, you may search your library for a basic land card, reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle your library. Swiftfoot Boots. Two generic for an artifact equipment. Equipped creature has hexproof and haste and equipped for one. Definitely a commander staple. Thopter Foundry. Uh, one hybrid black-white and a blue. For an artifact, pay one, a generic, sacrifice a non-token artifact, create a 1-1 one, one blue Thopter artifact creature token with flying, you gain one life. I believe that's part of an infinite combo with Sword of the Meek. Commander Sphere, three mana for an artifact, tap it to add to 
to your mana pool one mana of any color in your commander's color identity. Sacrifice it to draw a card. Loxodon Warhammer is a three mana equipment. A equipped creature gets plus three plus O and has trample and lifelink and equip for three. Grip of Phyresis is a newly printed card. It's two and a blue for an instant. Gain control of target equipment, then create a zero zero black germ creature token and attach that equipment to it. <clears throat> Ancient Excavation is two, a blue, and a black for an instant. Draw cards equal to the number of cards in your hand. <clears throat> Excuse me. Then discard a card for each card drawn this way. And it has basic land cycling for two generic. We have a split card, Trial and Error. Trial is a blue and a white for an instant. Return all creatures blocking or blocked by target creature to their owner's hand. And Error is a blue and a black for an instant. Counter target multicolored spell. Whip Flare is one and a red for a sorcery. It deals two damage to each non-artifact creature. Parting Thoughts is two and a black for a sorcery. Destroy target creature. You draw X cards and you lose X life, or X is the number of counters on that creature. Migratory Root is three, a white, and a blue for a sorcery. You create four 1-1 one, one white bird creature tokens with flying, and has basic land cycling for two. Armory Automaton is another cool new card. It's three generic mana for a 2-2 artifact creature construct. When it enters the battlefield or attacks, you may attach any number of target equipment to it. Magus of the Will is two and a black for a 3-3 three, three creature human wizard. You can pay two and a black, tap it, and exile Magus of the Will. Until end of turn, you may play cards from your graveyard. And if it, one if card would be put into your graveyard from anywhere this turn, exile it instead. Fairy Artisans is three and a blue for a 2-2 two, two creature fairy artificer with flying. Whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield under an opponent's control, create a token that's a copy of that creature, except it's an artifact in addition to its other types, then exile all other tokens created with it. Curse of Vengeance is one black for an enchantment or a curse. Enchant player. Whenever enchanted player casts a spell, put a spite counter on Curse of Vengeance, when Enchanted Player loses the game, uh, you gain X life and draw X cards, where X is the number of spite counters on Curse of Vengeance. Coastal Breach is six and a blue for a sorcery with Undaunted, so it costs one less to cast for each opponent in the game, uh, return all non-land permanents to their owner's hands. Sidri, Galvanic Genius, is one white, one blue, and one black for a 2-2 legendary creature, human artificer. One blue and target non-creature artifact becomes an artifact creature with power and toughness each equal to, a con to its converted mana cost until end of turn. And then a uh, black and a white and target artifact creature gains death touch and lifelink until end of turn. Ether Sworn Adjudicator is four and a blue for a four four artifact creature, Vidalcan Knight with flying. Pay one, a white and a black, and tap it and destroy target creature or enchantment. And you can pay two and a blue to untap this creature. So you could potentially destroy things multiple times turn if you had enough mana. Soul of New Phyrexia is 6 generic for an artifact creature avatar. 
It's a 6-6 six, six with trample. Can pay five and permanence you control. Gain indestructible until end of turn. Can also pay five and exile it from your graveyard. Permanence you control. Gain indestructible until end of turn. Hellkite Tyrant is four and two red for a six five dragon with flying and trample. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, gain control of all artifacts that player controls. At the beginning of your upkeep, if you control 20 or more artifacts, you win the game. Kind of crazy, but not impossible, I suppose. Shroom the Hegemon is three, a white, a blue, and a black for a 5-5 five, five legendary artifact creature, Sphinx, with flying. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, you may return target artifact card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Ready, Scrap Savant is three and a red for a three loyalty planeswalker. His plus two is discard up to two cards, then draw that many cards. His minus two is sacrifice an artifact. If you do, return target artifact card from your graveyard to the battlefield. And his minus ten is you get an emblem with whenever an artifact is put into your graveyard from the battlefield, return that card to the battlefield at the beginning of the next end step. It's the only Commander 2016 set that has a Planeswalker in it. It's interestingly a Commander 2014, I think. Um, Commander, so that's interesting. Uh, Chief Engineer, one in a blue for a 1-3 Vidalcan Artificer. Artifact spells you cast have Convoke, which means you can tap a creature to add one mana of that creature's color to pay for artifacts, to help pay for artifacts. Uh, Slow Bad Goblin Tinker is one in a red for a 1-2 legendary creature Goblin Artificer. You can sacrifice an artifact and target artifact gains indestructible until end of turn. <clears throat> uh, Shimmer Mirror is 3 mana for a 2-2 mirror with flash. You may cast artifact spells as though they had flash. Master of Ethereum is two and a blue for a star star artifact creature, Vidalcan Wizard. Its power and toughness are each equal to the number of artifacts you control, and other artifact creatures you control get plus one plus one. Hannah Ship's Navigator is one a white and a blue for a 1-2 legendary creature, Human Artificer. You can pay one a white and a blue and tap it to return target artifact or enchantment card from your graveyard to your hand. Solemn Simulacrum, a four generic mana for a 2-2 artifact creature, Golem. When it enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a basic land, put it onto the battlefield tapped, then shuffle your library, and when it dies, you may draw a card. Jorkadeen, the Prevailer, is three, a red, and a white for a 5-4 legendary creature, Human Warrior. It has First Strike and Metalcraft, so as long as you control three or more artifacts, creatures you control get plus three plus O. Oh. It's the more aggressive side of the deck, I guess. Sphinx Summoner. A three of blue and a black for a 3-3 three, three artifact creature, Sphinx, with flying. When it enters the battlefield, you may search your library for an artifact creature card, reveal it, and put it into your hand. If you do, shuffle your library. Uh, Godo, Bandit Warlord is five and a red for a 3-3 legendary creature, Human Barbarian. When Godo Bandit Warlord enters the battlefield, you may search your library for an equipment card and put it onto the battlefield. If you do, shuffle your library. Whenever Godo attacks for the first time each turn, untap it and all samurai you control. After this phase, there is an additional combat phase. I don't think there's any other samurai in the deck. I'm pretty sure it's in here for just the first... Uh, the first ability. Mirror Battle Sphere is 7 generic for a 4 7 artifact creature, Mirror Construct. 
When it enters the battlefield, create four 1-1 one, one colorless mirror artifact creature tokens. Whenever it attacks, you may tap X untapped mirror you control. If you do, it gets plus X plus O until end of turn and deals X damage to the defending player. Seems good. Hellkite Igniter is 5 and 2 red for a 5 5 dragon with flying in haste. You can pay 1 and a red, and it gets plus X plus O until end of turn, where X is the number of artifacts you control. Filigree Angel is 5, 2 white, and a blue for a 4 4 artifact creature angel with flying. When it enters the battlefield, you gain 3 life for each artifact you control. Bone Horde is a 4 mana artifact equipment with living weapon, so it comes into play on a 0 0 black germ creature token. Uh, equipped creature gets plus X plus X, where X is the number of creature cards in all graveyards, and it has equipped for 2. Nivineral's Disc um, it enters the battlefield tapped. Pay one generic and tap it to destroy all artifacts, creatures, and enchantments. Trading Post does a lot. It's four mana for an artifact, and it has four different abilities that require you to pay one and tap it. The first one, you do that and discard a card, gain four life. Then you pay one and tap it and pay a life to create a zero one white goat creature token. Pay one, tap it, and sacrifice a creature. Return target artifact card from your graveyard to your hand, and pay one and tap it and sacrifice an artifact, draw a card. So basically they all play off of each other, which is kind of cool. Uh, Blink Moth Urn is five mana for an artifact. At the beginning of each player's pre-combat main phase, if it is untapped, that player adds uh, colorless to his or her mana pool for each artifact he or she controls. Read the runes is X and a blue for an instant. Draw X cards. For each card drawn this way, discard a card unless you sacrifice a permanent. Interesting. Trash for treasure is two and a red for a sorcery. As an additional cost to cast treasure, trash for treasure, sacrifice an artifact. Return target artifact card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Beacon of Unrest is three and two black for a sorcery. Put target artifact or creature card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. Shuffle this into its owner's library. Open the Vaults is four and two white for a sorcery. Return all artifact and enchantment cards from all graveyards to the battlefield under their owner's control. Phyrexian Rebirth is four and two white for a sorcery. <clears throat> Destroy all creatures, then create an XX colorless horror artifact creature token, where X is the number of creatures destroyed this way. Exotic Orchard is a land. It taps to add to your mana pool one mana of any color that a land an opponent controls could produce. <clears throat> Grave Upheaval is four, a black and a red for a sorcery. Put target creature card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. It gains haste. Has basic land cycling for two. And speaking of basic land cycling. We have some basic lands. We have one, two, three, four, five planes. One, two, three, four, five islands. One, two, three, four swamps. And one, two, three, four mountains. So a relatively even distribution. And then we have some non-basic lands. We have Arcane Sanctum. Enters tapped and taps for white, blue, or black. Ash Barrens, which taps for colorless and has basic land cycling for one. Azorius Chancery enters tapped. You must return a land you control to its owner's hand when it enters, but it taps for both blue and white together. Bar 
Boros Garrison is the same thing, but taps for a red and a white. Buried Ruin uh, lets you add one colorless mana to your mana pool, and you can pay two, tap it, and sacrifice it to return an artifact card from your graveyard to your hand. Command Tower it taps for any... Ta add to your mana pool one mana of any color in your commander's color identity. Another commander staple. Crumbling Necropolis enters tapped and taps for blue, black, or red. Dark Steel Citadel is an artifact land. And it's indestructible and it taps for colorless. Demir Aqueduct is another bounce land. Enters tapped. You return land to your hand and taps for a blue and a black. Evolving Wilds. Can tap it and sacrifice it to search for your library for a basic land, put it onto the battlefield tapped. Mystic Monastery comes in tapped, taps for blue, red, or white. Nomad Outpost enters tapped, taps for red, white, or black. Rakdos Carnarium, another bounce land, taps for black or red. Rupture Spire enters tapped. Uh, you sacrifice it unless you pay one generic, and then you can add one mana of any color to your mana pool. Seat of the Synod is an artifact land that taps for blue. Terramorphic Expanse is the same as Evolving Wilds. Tap it and sacrifice it to put a basic land from your library onto the battlefield tapped. Trans Guild Promenade is the same as Rupture Spire. It enters tapped. You sacrifice it unless you pay one when it comes into play, and you can add one mana of any color to your mana pool. And our last card in the deck is Temple of the False God. You can add tap it to add two colorless to your mana pool, but only if you control five or more lands. Alright, so that is the Invent Superiority deck. I like what it has to offer. In the area of lands, not so much. Uh, the other decks have better lands. I'm not sure why this one doesn't. Maybe it's because they think that you don't need too much color fixing, because a lot of the cards are colorless. Um, so it doesn't have any of the cool dual lands, like the buddy lands or anything like that. Um, but it's still a cool deck, and excited to play with it so if you guys have any of the new commander decks let me know which one you got and how you like it so far and i'm gonna be playing around with this one and seeing what it is capable of so thank you all for watching and i will see you in the next one good night make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already